This is a tutorial about rooms. Which is one of my favourite games. And so I'm going to open the rooms app and I'm using my iPad for this tutorial. That's the home page. And then we've got the explore page over here. Um, this will load in a second, which is another way of finding other people's rooms. I've got my notifications and my profile. Um, but if we want to make our room, which I assume we do, because I am we, we're going to click on the plus icon down the bottom. So this opens up several options. You can start from scratch or you can remix a base room. So a base is just a room with something in it already. And I'm going to go with the base room. I'm going to choose this one on the left. So the first thing we have to do is save as. We want to save this room. So that is in the top right hand corner. Save as. Um, I'm going to call it tutorial. And just bear in mind that you can't rename your room. It will save it as an, like a separate room. We save the room first because it opens up some editing options that you don't have if you don't save it. And I'm going to take you through the user interface. There's two main modes. We can switch between the two modes up the top. So there's the play or the view mode, which we're on right now. And that allows you to look at your room. And the one on the left, the pen and the paper, is edit mode. The layout is really nice, it's pretty simple. Everything that happens on the right hand panel here is editing. Right now we have options to edit the room as a whole. We can choose if we want it to be public or unlisted. That's up to you. Um, and has some lighting and camera options, blah, 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 blah. We can get into that later. Um, of course, in the middle is where all the, the work happens. And then on the left, we'll have like every item that you add in it. Because basically rooms works like you can make items or things, a 3D object from scratch but you can also get a lot of the items that are already in the app, they're in the thing library. So if we want to add one of these objects into the room, we go down to the bottom left hand corner. This plus icon opens the thing library. So all of these things, as they call them, uh, have been uploaded by generally users on the app. Like, I won't show you how to do that now, but um, people upload their own things, and if they're approved, they show up and everyone can use them, which I think is really cool. So, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna have a browse, I'm gonna add in something random. I kind of feel like adding a tree. So to add an item, you select the one you want by holding down with your finger or stylus. You basically just drag the item in. And you'll see that it, the base of the item usually will align with your floor of your room. Okay, so we've added our first tree. Let's get in the habit of saving, top right hand corner. And if we close the thing library, which is this cross on this left hand panel, we can see that the tree has now appeared in the contents on the left hand side. You'll notice that there's like an arrow next to the tree. It's just because it's made up of like several objects. But if you drag it from the base object, um, it'll move around just fine. If we want to adjust the view of our workspace, we pinch to zoom out and we spread our fingers out to zoom in. A single finger will allow you to look around. Two fingers, you can fully look around. I can't explain that in a better way, but you can see what I'm doing. Okay. We want to make sure it's selected. That's the first step. Once it has this green box around it, we know it is selected. 
and if we want to rotate it we can use these green arrows below it so that takes you around and back and we can bring it up or down when I'm dragging this arrow up or down the green grid comes up at the base of the tree so that kind of allows you to see where it is in space because it can get a little bit confusing and I think this is where the main learning curve is like we're used to working visually with a 2d space like drawing or you know like um, watching TV or whatever um, but like adding another dimension to a working environment um, I would say be prepared to like be a little bit frustrated it took me a while to get the hang of it okay so here's the thing so if you're like just dragging it it's only only going to move on a horizontal plane it's never going to move like up or down like the arrow does when let's say we drag the tree okay it looks like it's above the room but remember when you're dragging it only moves horizontally so it's behind the room so when we drag it back, it's going to come in level with the floor again. Yeah, you get the hang of it. Let's add some more things to get some practice. I'm going to add these mushrooms. So hold down, drag in. They'll come in level with the floor. Okay. That didn't come in level with the floor. <laughs> That's also a good tip. Like I always kind of like bring my view to the side and I can see if things are floating in space. Got some mushrooms. Let's bring a shell in. Let's save our work. Okay, you'll notice that I did change the size of the shell. Um, and you can do, you can basically edit the objects however you like. Um, and a good way to show you this is on the right hand panel. This right hand paddle is the editing panel. It has two modes. So there's a room editor as a whole, and now there's an object editor. Now it's on seashell, so it can edit whatever object you select tree, mushroom. And if I click on the background or just away from any object, it's going to change back to the room editor. Let's get a, like a closer look at this object. Um, the three main options for like object editing are up the top here. The cube on the left hand side of this panel, if I click on that it's going to open the object editor. So they're just made out of like these tiny cubes which are called voxels. So it's like the dimension of a pixel basically but in 3D. Here you can kind of, you can change the colors if you want to. Um, I'm not going to go into it now because it's a bit more detailed. And there are some more basic options. Scale is really handy. You want to do like something where maybe you're really close to an object, you just change the size of the scale. Or if you're really far away from an object, like you want to have that illusion, you just play with the scale. Style offers you like general editing options so you can change the overall tint like the actual colors stay the same but there's just like a tint applied to the top the opacity is how transparent it is and the glow um, is pretty fun the second glow slider just shows like what pixels are, or voxels are affected by the glow. So to the right is like very few and then all the way to the left is like all of them. And advanced, I'm not going to go into that. Let's just add a few more things for fun. Let's add another mushroom. Uh, another tip that I have is lighting. To me, this makes the biggest difference in the mood. Um, and it's so fun to play with. Um, so the general lighting settings we can find in the room editing panel. So 
make sure that you just have like you've just tapped on the background and up the top here under the visibility tab is the lighting tab so I usually leave it on dim dark is very dark it's good for some things I like never leave it on bright basically and I just do it on dim and then I like make my own mood lighting um, so I usually use like a particular light in all my rooms because it's kind of set at like the perfect light setting so you'll notice that it is glowing so some objects have special properties i'll show you in this object editor down the bottom right this yellow voxel will emit light Right now it's already added into this object, but I think it's just buried and we can't see it. But the other special properties, just quickly, is you can add text and you can also add like images. So click off that and yeah, so this light setting, if we go down on the right hand panel, under light, the intensity, how much light there is and then the range how far the light reaches of this light is just set to a really nice place for me where it just feels really warm and inviting go back to under the style menu and set the opacity to zero so you can't see the light um itself and then it's kind of just like this oh it's a mysterious mood lighting that um comes from mother nature and you know, I just, you just go wild. And usually I think about this a little more precisely or intentionally, but it's also fun just to play around and add some random lights. Okay, so you've got your mood lighting. I'm going to go back into the room editor. I'm going to change the background color to a nice warm dark blue so this there's like two colors that you can set you can set like the outside vignette or the kind of ring and then the inside one maybe i'll go with the green save your work okay fabulous so right now, like this whole thing is being done in the, the editing menu up the top here, editing mode and play or view mode. So play or view is like how it will appear to people if they're just like scrolling on their feed. It has a default camera angle, but we can actually adjust that. So I've just gone back into edit mode. And if you want to change the camera, you go to the room edit panel and under camera is add camera. So this takes you into a view where you are, you are the camera. You can set that however you desire and the field of view, so you can do very zoomed in and compressed, um, a telescopic, I think it is. I did study photography. Let's do that and tick. And so now in the editing view, you can also like continue to move the camera if you want. And if we want to see what the camera looks like to other people, go back into the view mode up the top on the triangle. So for the final thing, if you want to publish your room is under the visibility setting in the rooms edit panel. So we just change it from unlisted to public. You can also add a little description here, blah, 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 and you can add it to a category, whatever you want. Experiment, second one, art, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's published. So I'll save. Let's exit out of this, like, create mode in the top left-hand corner, and it'll take you to your new room. And if you want to go back and edit it, you can click this edit icon on the right hand menu.
it's a free app, free to get an account. You can play it without an account, but you just can't save rooms. There's actually so much that you can do in this program, and I just want to give you the basics. You know, you can build like a cozy or bedroom, or you can build like a fantasy world or something scary, whatever you want. Those are the kind of main tools that you need to do it.